Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 661. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook Excel Magic Trick 661 to 671. Wow, the next 11 videos, 61 to 71, are all about the new aggregate function in Excel 2010. Yes, 11 videos. This function does so many things. Here's some notes right here. Uh, aggregate function is a function that returns a single value from a collection of values, things like average or min or max, looking at a lot of values and giving you one value. Now, we've had the subtotal function, which is similar. The subtotal function had the ability to do subtotals, meaning it could look at filtered or hidden data or not look at filtered or hidden data. Well, the aggregate function can do that and a lot more. First thing about aggregate is um, subtotal, pivot tables, um, and consolidation all have these 11 aggregate functions. But the aggregate, that's subtotal. The aggregate function adds these other ones. Now, all of these, va all these right here calculate a single value. Here, the median and the mode has finally been added. Um, I wish those had been in pivot tables and before in subtotal before, but those are new. And so 13 to 1 all return a single value, and these functions cannot handle arrays. But the aggregate for 14 to 19, large, small, percentile, inclusive, quartile, inclusive, those are the old ways of calculating, and then percentile exclusive and quartile exclusive, much a much better calculation. I have a, a video on that if you want to search. But all of these 14 to 19 can handle arrays. Um, so that's just one of the options. So we have 19 uh, possibilities for functions. Then we have all these new options. Ign um, let's start here. These are ignore nothing. Um, ignore hidden rows. That means you can add or average and just hide whichever rows you want and it'll calculate. Ignore error values. This is a great function. Sometimes we get a, have a column of, of values and there's error values. And when you sum them, you get a value error. No way. This function will solve that problem. We'll look at all of these and more. Uh, and ignore hidden rows and error values together. Also, nested subtotals. Sometimes if you have a huge column with lots of subtotals, you just you don't want to you want to highlight the whole column including all these calculations and ignore them. And so this function can do that. It could also there's all sorts of permutations. Um, ignore hidden rows, subtotals and aggregate, errors, nested subtotal, aggregate, uh, hidden rows, errors, subtotal, so all sorts of different permutations. We'll look at at least five or six of these. Now in this first video we're just going to look at the different functions. Here is a data set. Now if you're doing calculations, um, let's just say you want to do something like you want to calculate the average, the count, the max, the min, standard deviation of the sample, sum, median and mode, right? Look at all these functions. I already did this. I calculated the average and then the count. I mean, I had to actually p type all these functions in, max, min. Well, with aggregate, if you know your numbers, you have your uh, you know, 1 through 13 here, or whatever numbers you want, you can simply do equals aggregate. All right, here's the first time we get to look at this. The first argument, and by the way, if I go backwards just a bit here, uh, I don't know how to, let me see if I can move this. No, I can move this one right here. Uh, there's two types, right? Functions, options, we'll look at that in just a moment. Array, that's for 14 through 19, and a K, that's for small and large. And then aggregate function, options, and reference, that's the one we're using for uh, 1 through 13. All right, so those are two different types, one for array, uh, this one right here, and one for non-array. All right, so the function. We are simply going to, instead of typing it in, which you could do lots of time, we want to do a whole column of functions. So I'm just going to highlight that one, then we copy it down and get each one of those numbers, comma. Now the next argument is, what do you want to do? For this one, we're just going to ignore nothing. We'll have videos on each one of these options coming up. So I'm going to ignore nothing. You put a 4, 
comma, and then the array or reference. I'm simply going to come over here and highlight this column, Control Shift Down Arrow, and then F4 to lock it. And that's it. All you need for the reference one, which means functions 1 to 13, is 1. You certainly could type a comma and then put another reference comma, you know, wherever the values might be. There you go. Control Enter, double click and send it down. And instantly you get a whole column of your calculations. There's the count, there's the max, there's the min. Now some of these are not particularly relevant product. Uh, not, don't need it. Um, most of the time you do standard deviation of a sample. Most of the time you do variance of a sample. Sum, that'll be a real common one. We'll look at that one to avoid errors in an upcoming video. Now, that's 1 through 13. Let's look at 1 through uh, 14 through 19 equals aggregate. And uh, we're again going to just use this value right here for function number, comma, and we're going to ignore nothing this time. We'll look at some of the other options coming up. And then now, this is the array one. Now, you can put an array here just like some of the array formulas you've seen me do here at uh, Excel is Fun, but we just want this column. Because an array means it could be a fancy array created. Uh, you know, with all sorts of formulas, or uh, an array constant, or just simply a range. Array just means uh, more than one value. Now, for us, we're going to need a k. All of these functions, large, small, percentile, quartile, percentile, quartile, all need a second argument. Now, point, uh, an important point is if you enter a function like th uh, this, and that number right there is 14, right, and you enter it, you're going to get a value error. It's telling you, hey, you forgot the second argument for, uh, or the k as they call it here. So, comma, that's one way to get a value error. We'll look at a, another one later. Uh, so, our k, large, unlike max, you can say, hey, give me the second largest or the third largest. Same with small. So, I'm simply going to click right and I can't really get to that cell right there, so I'm going to click there and then up arrow. Now when I control enter, you can see it got the second biggest value. If I change this to if I change this to four, that means it will give me the fourth biggest or the fifth biggest. Alright? So now when I copy this down to here. Now it's getting the uh, fifth smallest. There it is right there. The 15 tells the aggregate, hey, I'm going to get the uh, smallest. Now, percentile, quartile, that's, I have other videos on these in my st statistics series. But percentile is easy. Hey, you're in the 90th percentile on your CPA score. That means 90% of, um, of the scores scored below your particular score. Quartile, there's the first, second, third quartile. Usually you divide data sets up into four quartiles. Um, the second would be the one in the middle, the median. The first one would be the, the marking point positionally of one quarter of the way through the data. So when I copy these down here, I already have the relevant values for the second argument. For percentile, you always have to put you know, 0.9 for the 90th or 0.75 for uh, the 75th percentile. Uh, one, that just means the first quartile. If I change that to two, that's the same as the medium. Three, that's the uh, third quartile. The interesting thing about quartile is zero means minimum and uh, four means maximum. That's for another video. I just want to do the first quartile there. All right, um, and if you want to see the difference between the percentile INC and percentile EXC, I have a great video. Just search for 2010 percentile. Totally awesome new addition to 2010. All right, so this was about the aggregate function in this first video of 11. Uh, 10 more coming up. We just looked at the 19 different functions, the fact that 14 through 19, we haven't seen yet how they can handle arrays, but we, that's coming up. And then 13 to 1, those ones can't handle arrays. But totally awesome new function. When we come back, our next example in 662 will be about how this function can help to um, in calculations where you're hiding rows and you don't want the rows to be involved in the calculation. All right, see you next trick.